My name is Ian Morris and I've been working with coral expeditions mainly along our North Australian coastline for nearly 20 years as a guest lecturer. Coral expeditions started uh, looking at the Kimberley in about the late 90s and uh, a young lady came along and, and asked me would I be interested in helping them and I was. I, I helped them put an itinerary together and then she said would you like to come on the ships and, and teach and I said no, 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 I'm, I'm really busy thanks but I'll help you anytime you need to make up an agenda. And she asked many times, and a friend of mine, retired from Kakadu National Park, wonderful guy, good on the ocean. We used to go with the Navy out to Ashmore Reef. I knew he was a good sailor, good with the public, knew his wildlife. I said, go and do some runs for coral expeditions, get them off my back, you know, go and, go and uh, do a bit of guest lecturing, and it'd be really good. So he did it, and he came back, and I said, how'd you go? And he said, you should be doing that. I said, no, nah, not, not tourism. He said, it's not tourism, it's education. Said, really? He said, yeah, and what's more, I've put your name down, so you're doing the next couple of, so that's how I got involved. Expedition cruising is another way, it's a more detailed way of looking at where you're going. Um, I know a lot of companies put the emphasis on the ship and it's, it's, it's uh, luxury and it's food, um, and a little bit about the route. We. We have a five star operation, but our, our focus is on Australia and on where we are and, and the significance of, of the place there. Now, a lot of Aussies, um, they come on these trips with our company just to learn more. They feel guilty about not knowing uh, uh, parts of Australia, particularly remote areas like Cape York or the Kimberley. And so they, they lap up what we can give them. And it's, it's quite good being a presenter, a provider of this sort of information because people are hungry to learn. And, and a lot of the places we go to, there was very little known about them. And so we're in a position as guest lecturers that we can actually put the story together. And uh, so a lot of my spare time, I'm running around gathering more facts about these remote places we visit. We never know what we're going to see. You come around the corner and you'll see a crocodile fighting another crocodile. Uh, you may see a rare little mammal. I remember um, taking passengers up to an art site on a windy, rocky little track. And I looked down and I saw some hakea nuts. It's a native, native plant. And these nuts are really, really hard. You can't break them with a hammer. But they'd been chewed through by a little animal and the, the kernels of the, the nuts had been taken out and eaten. And I looked at these and I looked at the tooth marks and I thought, what would have teeth that could get through one of those? I thought, it must be a golden back tree rat. So I said to the people with me, I'm going to come back with a remote camera, I'm going to tie it to this tree and I'm going to see what comes back to eat these nuts. And a few days later we got our camera back and ran through the footage and there's a golden back tree rat, one of the rarest mammals in the Kimberley in front of the lens eating one of these seeds and uh, I was able to send that to the West Australia Museum. They were very excited to know that they're still alive and well in that particular area. So there's little things like that, that um, another time I saw a little spider in a cave and I thought I've never seen a spider like that. Um, that was like a spider on steroids so I photographed it, I sent it down to West Australia Museum and they said that's a male um, jumping spider species, we've never seen one. We've got the female in our collection, nobody's ever seen a male and you've photo just photographed a male. So they're the sort of things that these Kimberley trips um, often produce out of nowhere, you know, you just never know what you're going to see next. But it's, it's such a, an unstudied area that we visit, we're lucky enough to be able to get to. Uh, it's, it's too remote and expensive for scientific people to get up to a lot of these places, so we're in a great position. So just even a little spider can be significant in a trip. Coral Expeditions, I think, has been uh, very wise in inviting people like myself. Um, some of us are terrestrial experts on the land and, and uh, birds and animals and plants. Some of us are marine experts. Uh, we've got quite a few marine biologists who are guest lecturers with this company, but they tend to pick uh, people who've specialised in different areas along our routes to come and teach us about it. And I think that's one of the really special um, aspects of coral expeditions is they do have people who can really teach subjects that are new and little known and, 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 and exciting. So uh, for me these, these uh, expeditions are fantastic because I always say no matter who you are as a guest, as a passenger, it will change you positively and, and it does, everybody.